Hello everyone. A mother had taught her three children to close their eyes during grace before meals. One day, as they were praying, the mother called out to the youngest child who was under three years old and said, You must close your eyes. We are praying now. How do you know that I don't, mom? The child responded. Friends, the moral of this story is that when we set standards for our households and our children and for others, it goes without saying that we ourselves must first live by the standards we set. Friends, the Gospels record many confrontations between Jesus and the Jewish religious groups of his day. They often put forward questions with the intent of trapping Jesus into saying something wrong which they could use against him. We have read some of them in the last couple of weeks. For instance, you may remember the Pharisees and the Herodians tried to set a trap for Jesus with a query about paying taxes to Caesar. Jesus responded by saying, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Friends, what Jesus meant here was that if they, as Caesar subjects, used the coins imprinted with his image, then it was their duty to submit to his demands and pay taxes to him, and at the same time give to God his due, because they are made in the image and likeness of God. Friends, at the end of the story, Matthew writes that they were amazed at his way of teaching and they left him alone and went away. Thereafter, the Sadducees, who do not believe in the resurrection or life after death, approached Jesus with a question concerning a childless widow who had been married in succession to the brothers of a deceased husband. They refer to the teaching in Deuteronomy on leveret marriage, which ensures the continuation of the lineage of the deceased man, and asked Jesus, In the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife she will be? since the seven were married to her. Jesus quickly pointed out their ignorance of the scriptures or the power of God and showed them that 1. The Torah, which they held as the word of God, affirmed the resurrection. 2. In the resurrection, the children of God will be like angels and there will be no marriage. On hearing this, the Sadducees were reduced to silence. And then last week, we read about a scholar of the scriptures representing the Pharisees who came and asked Jesus to identify the greatest commandment. In response, Jesus quoted from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6, which says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And from Leviticus, chapter 9, verse 18, which says, Love your neighbor as yourself. That is, they were to love God with the whole of their being and love their neighbors as they, in fact, loved themselves. Friends, today's gospel is a part of Jesus' final instructions before his arrest, crucifixion, and death. This time, Jesus spoke to the crowds and his disciples about the spiritual failure of the scribes and the Pharisees who saw themselves as righteous. Friends, Jesus began by saying something surprising to the crowds and to his disciples. He said, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they will tell you. Friends, a seat here refers to a position of authority. The scribes were lawyers and the Pharisees were religious teachers in Jesus' time. Their job was simply to study the law and interpret its application to daily life. The law refers to the law of Moses, or the covenants that God made with his people during the time of Moses. It consisted of many ceremonies, rituals and symbols, which frequently reminded people of the duties and responsibilities. They have taken their seat on the chair of Moses means that they hold an office of authority to teach the doctrine and interpret and administer the law. Hence, Jesus enjoined his followers to show due respect to them by obedience to their preaching. The respect was due to the scribes and the Pharisees, not because of their conduct, but because they were seated in Moses' chair. 
Friends, it is important note here that at that moment Jesus did not ask his followers to ignore what the Pharisees and scribes were teaching even though he had branded them hypocrites. That would not be in keeping with God's command to respect and honor spiritual authority. Instead, he exhorted his followers to observe and do whatever they are told by them, but not to follow their example. Friends, Jesus went on to say why they were such bad examples. He said, 1. They preach but do not practice. That is, they do not put into practice what they say and they have number of excuses not to act accordingly. 2. They tie up heavy burdens and load them on the shoulders of the people, but they do not even lift your finger to move them. Friends, this phrase is derived from the custom of loading animals. The load or burden is bound up and then laid on an animal. Jesus used this image to describe how the Pharisees and the scribes, in addition to 613 Jewish laws, had introduced and imposed upon their followers innumerable traditions, minute regulations and prescriptions, but would not allow themselves to undergo the least of those severities. Clearly, Jesus denounced not the law nor any legitimate rite and ceremony of the law or even immemorial traditions, but specifically the severe enforcement by men who regarded only the letter of the laws and had lost the spirit. 3. They do everything in order to be seen by people. That is, they performed rituals, followed religious practices, gave alms not out of their love for God and their neighbors, but rather to get the attention and appreciation of others. 4. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. Friends, phylacteries were little boxes on which copies of portions of scripture or written prayers were stowed and bound to arms and hands or onto foreheads. In doing this, they were seeking to apply literally what is said in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 6, which says, God said to the Israelites, And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down. And when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Friends, ordinarily, Jewish men would wear these phylacteries during prayers, but some scribes and Pharisees would continue to wear them in public to show their religious devotion, and they would even make the phylacteries broad, that is, large and easy to see in order to show that they were loaded up with a lot of the passage of scriptures and a lot of prayers. In addition, they also lengthened their tassels. Friends, a tassel is a group of short threads or ropes held together at one end. In biblical times, in obedience to the commandment of God to make tassels on the corners of their garments, the men would attach the tassels to the four corners of your tunic that was customarily own. These tassels dangling down from their outer garment were to serve as a constant reminders to faithfully follow the commandments of God in daily life. But the scribes and the Pharisees made their tassels ostentatiously wrong in order to give everyone the impression that they were more devoted to the law than everyone else. 5. They also expected special attention to be given to them. The first to row in the synagogues, places of honor at banquets, and special honorific titles such as Rabbi. Friends, after stating the customs of the Pharisees and scribes, Jesus proceeded to give his own disciples a lesson in humility. He urged them, As for you, do not be called a Rabbi, and do not be called Master. That is, they are not to be eager for such distinctions. They should not be ambitious for any such title, fond of it, or be affected by it, or be elated with it, should it be given them. Nor look upon themselves as people of power and authority over others, 
as though having dominion over others' faith or power to make laws for others, impose these in a magisterial way and bind others at pleasure as the Pharisees and the scribes did. Finally, he said to them that the greatest is the one who serves. Friends, this was an important teaching to his followers because they were often contending about this among themselves as to who should be the greatest. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. Some people tend to think that the teaching of Jesus such as they preach but they do not practice are applicable solely to priests and preachers who are seen as preaching so piously yet live so badly. But this teaching is not restricted to preachers. It is for all, parents, catechists, teachers, priests alike, those who think they can help others by setting standards for them, yet they themselves don't feel the need to keep them, and for those who conveniently forget their faults and point out someone else. So, we must be sure that we preach nothing to others that we are not prepared to apply equally to ourselves. There should be a genuine effort to proclaim the gospel of Jesus and to conform our lives to it. While practice will probably never reach the high standard of God's will in every detail, there must be a wholehearted effort to embrace God's will in life. 2. Jesus wants us to learn to give respect and honor to those who hold positions of authority over us, particularly those who are spiritually instructing and disciplining us even though they may not be living exemplary lives, because they teach us not their wisdom but the word of God. Being a messenger of the gospel does not mean that sin no longer affects them and they are perfect human beings. In fact, the devil does the absolutely everything in his power to trap them even more. So today, we can pray for more prophetic priests who can be exemplary to others. Three. We do not have to hide our devotion to and love of God, our faith and good works. Far from it. Jesus himself has said, Let your light show sign before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Friends, we are to let our light shine so that more and more people may glorify the Father rather than glorify us. We Catholics have a variety of ways to show our devotion to and love of God. We attend Mass, pray the Rosary, do or do the Stations of the Cross, wear a religious medal or scapula, or say a novena, use pray pictures, statues, images and icons in our church and in our homes. But when we encounter ridicule insults from others because of faith, and religious practices, we tend to hide our faith behind this idea that it is a very personal thing. Of course, we must be careful not to use religious medals or statues in a superstitious way. We must not worship them, rather we must use them as mere reminders to stay close to God and try to imitate the sanctity and holiness of the saints. And at the same time, let our devotion, praise and worship and good works to our neighbors be sincere, pure, and motivated by a love for God with an eye to God's glory always. Amen. God bless you.